remember at your wedding, if you happen to be married, how awesome it is to bring together the great people from your life with the great people from your partner's wife life? Um, I feel a little bit like that professionally here today because I, on the one hand, have these awesome relationships that I value very deeply with some of the leading minds on suicide prevention in the world, John and Shelby and Joey and Francis, but I also have this wonderful relationship with partners and journalists in this community who are really dedicated to truth telling. And I am a, I, I'm all, I, my life is, maybe you know, is I just grew up in a family that's all about public policy and about getting public policy right and changing lives through public policy. And the press is an absolutely essential partner to that in a democracy. So taking those two parts of my life, the professional uh, and, and substantive folks from the suicide side and the journalists and truth tellers from the, the community side and putting them in one room feels a little bit like a wedding. So I'm really excited about it. Um, my name is Dwight Holton. I'm the CEO of Lines for Life. Lines for Life is a nonprofit dedicated to preventing substance abuse and suicide. If you haven't come seen us, you ought to come see us. We talked to, in the last 12 months, we've talked to 25,000 people on the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, um, helping connect with people in their hardest times of crisis. We had about 825 suicides in Oregon last year. And some of you may notice, I said in an op-ed yesterday it was 750 and immediately an advocate jumped on me and said, there's a new number. The reality is it's 825 is the more recent number. Uh, this is a significant growth. It's 28% grown, 28% in the, the last uh, 17 years. That, that's not even, the 28% doesn't even reflect that more recent number of 825 deaths. Sec uh, suicide is now the second leading cause of death among young people in Oregon. This reflects a remarkable change in our volume on the crisis line, on the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline that we answer at Lines for Life. For years, our volume was steady around 12, 14,000 calls per year. And then, uh, just about exactly two years ago, that started to change. And our volume has dramatically increased to the point where um, this needs needs to be updated over the last couple months. We've now hit 25,000 over the last 12 months. And there are lots of things going on there. The uh, good news is that it reflects reaching a whole, a whole lot more people. And a lot of it, as I think John will tell you, has to do with some of the wall of stigma coming down as we have prominent coverage of the suicide deaths of folks like Anthony Bourdain and Kate Spade. Um, uh, efforts from folks like the music, musician Logic, who wrote a song, 1-800-273-8255, dedicated to the Natural Suicide Prevention Lifeline and telling that story. Uh, and we're also reaching many more young people, whoops, excuse me, many more young people. Um, the graph on the left, the graphic on the left shows the, uh, the reach of our text, our, our, our youth line, our peer-to-peer -peer youth line at Lines for Life, and if, it, it actually, if you go back a couple years further, back to 2012, to 2012 we reached about 800 kids. Uh, this year, we have 90 volunteers currently on the youth line, 90 kids who go through 40 hours of training and commit to 200 hours, and we'll reach about 16,000 kids. So we're making some progress, but we're still not having that community conversation the way we need to have it. And that's why we're here today. So our goal is really to start a conversation, to try and help equip you as journalists to tell this story in a way that's responsible, safe, respectful, and serves your purpose of truth telling. So thank you all very much for being here. Quick housekeeping item, if you need to go to the bathroom, they're out the way you came. Uh, there's also now water on the table, and there's also water fountains on the outside. Um, if you have questions at any time, our goal is to really make this a conversation. Um, but, uh, uh, but I want to end by thanking our panelists. Um, when we lined up folks, it was a plethora of riches. We had lots of people really interested in being a part of this. So uh, I wish we could have done more, in fact. Um, I want to ask Bob Wise and Craig Smullen from KOBI to come up for a second and tell us a little bit about how they helped get us here today. Uh, Bob is the station manager at KOBI in Medford. Craig is the news director at KOBI. And 
we've been having this conversation for two, three years now, right, Bob? That's right. Yeah, and so this is a, in some ways, this a, getting us all this this wedding, if you will, is a is a is a result of conversations that really started in the Rogue Valley a couple of years ago. You know, um, and little did I know I'd reconnect with a friend from 40 plus years ago in Houston, Texas. Dr. Draper and I played baseball together as kids. So, <laughs> and we just reconnected. How about that? It's a small world. Um, you know, much like KGW, our station really tries to have an impact in the communities we serve. And, uh, you know, we're family owned. We are very conscious of the situation going on in all the communities we serve. Our signal reaches 10 counties. But in Jackson County, just this year, there's been 45 suicides. That's blowing my mind. I mean, there's too, too much of this happening. So Craig and I, through the various stories that we look at and decide, well, what the hell are we going to do with this? It's been an ongoing discussion. When Dwight became executive director of Lines for Life, it was one of the first things I think we talked about when you, when you got in that role. And Dwight and I have been friends for a lot of years. And there's got to be a better way because what we're doing isn't working. So how do we get this to the next step? And I think when we called Dwight and we're looking for advice, there had been two suicides in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And maybe, Craig, you can share a little bit of the conversation and where we've gone from there. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, that, that 45 is a three-week-old number, so that's three-quarters of the year. Obviously, that's more than one a week. Um, you know, and, and compared to that state number, it doesn't sound like much, but Jackson County right now is double the national average uh, with suicide. Um, I know I'm talking to mental health yesterday in the county. Uh, they are going into schools, they're talking to kids, and they've seen those numbers come down the last couple years. But, you know, anything we can do on a local level to try and make a difference, because these things need to be talked about. That's what, that's what I think we're all kind of here to, to find a solution. You know, we're uh, a, a small market station. You know, most of my reporters are new to the business, new to journalism, might be their first job out of school. And they're, you know, sometimes handling these situations that they're not that familiar with. And so fortunately, we're, we're able to kind of give them that oversight and make sure that everything's done. We end every story with a, with a graphic, basically, you know, telling people the, the lifeline number, the, the text number, um, just trying to make sure that we can tell people that help is out there. And, you know, anything we can do as journalists to kind of help these, these situations and these people is, is what we want to do. Obviously worried about contagion, worried about sympathy for the families affected, uh, and our hope today and through this process of talking with Dwight uh, in having this summit today, and thank you KGW and DJ and Rick and all of the folks here, um, it, this is too important for journalists to sit on the sidelines. We just have to figure out a better way.